Okay. Hmm, this is odd. I can't see. Let's see, maybe when I start it, it'll be different. Okay, I'm just going to start letting some participants in. I'm super excited. For some reason, I can't see um, myself on the screen and for the YouTube, but oh, there it is right here. Perfect. I had to recalibrate and refresh. Okay, so I'm about to let people in. Super excited. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. It's gonna be so great. Hey everyone, woo, everyone's coming in. This is great. I don't know if you can see folks coming in, Bania, but they're coming in for your teaching. <laughs> Hi everyone, please feel free like we usually do for our events, uh, share with us your name, your pronouns, where you're from, and what brings you here. I know why you're here, because you're here to uh, hear Fania Noel with her amazing teaching on Afrofeminism in France. Um, so yeah, just please feel free to share. Um, we're super excited, and we'll be getting started in a couple of minutes. We're gonna let more people come in. Hi, Carol Ann from Canada, doctoral student working on race, gender-based violence, and massage and war in Francophone Quebec. Oh, wow, thank you for being here. That's amazing. Great, great, great. We're gonna get started in a, hi, oh. Clementine, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name properly, but wow, thank you so much for being here from Croatia. Wow, this is great. Oh, perfect. I, <laughs> I'm so happy I said your name correctly. Thank you so much. Great, we're gonna get started in a couple of minutes. Hi, Zoe, based in the UK. I'm currently finishing my degree in English literature and French. I'm the creator of a zine called Sweet Thing, which celebrates work by Black men and non-binary Black folks around the world. Wow, congratulations, Zoe, that's great. That's amazing. Well, feel free to you know, share more your names and where you're from, your pronouns and what you do. Um, and so I'm about to uh, actually introduce our STEAM guest. Um, before, but first and foremost, my name is Jamie Swift. I am the executive director of Black Women Radicals, which is a Black feminist advocacy organization dedicated to uplifting Black women and gender expansive peoples, radical activism in Africa and the African diaspora. Um, last year, we launched, Black Women Radicals launched the School for Black Feminist Politics, um, which is a Black feminist political education hub and center for expanding the frame of reference of Black politics through uh, the power of Black feminisms. And we're so honored today to have Fania Noel uh, as one of our uh, featured uh, curators and guests who are leading, the uh, leading a teach-in on Afrofeminism in France, uh, political autonomy as a compass. So I'm super excited for this event, this teach-in, because Fania's teach-in is a part of Black Women Radical's new series uh, called Afrofeminisms in Europe, which is a political interrogation, meditation, and celebration of European Afrofeminisms and Black feminisms. Um, before we get started with the event, I wanna establish, like I usually do, that this is a safe space, right? And so there's no accepting of white supremacy, anti-Blackness, transphobia, massage and war, ableism, you name it, we do not accept it. And if you cannot abide by those rules, I will have to kick you out. And so I don't wanna have to do that. So let's keep this um, as you know safe as we possibly can. 
So now I'm about to introduce our amazing curator uh, who's, lead, who's leading this powerful teaching. So Fania Noel is a Haitian born French Afro-feminist organizer, thinker and writer. Fania is an experienced organizer in grassroots movements against racism, specifically anti-blackness and black feminism in France. In addition to being a part of the Mawasi Collective Afrofeminist and Coordination Action Autonome Noir, she is the co-creator of the Decolonial Summer Camp, a five-day anti-racism training course in France. In 2014, she founded uh, Besieged, a political publishing project led by women, queer and trans people of color, where she's the actual publication director. In 2019, her book, Afro Community to Belong to Ourselves, has been published by Celepsi Edition, a French radical publishing house. The impetus of this small manifesto is an Afro-revolutionary and anti-imperialist utopia for the political organization of Black people in France against racial politics and neoliberalism. Fania is a PhD candidate in sociology at the New School for Social Research, and her areas of research are Africana feminism, materialist feminism, and capitalist studies. Wow. Fania is always doing something, right? Always, always being revolutionary. So I'm so grateful, and I'm about to hand it off to Fania. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really, um, it's really a pleasure. Uh, thank you for hosting this, uh, this event. And thank you everyone who is here. Um, uh, so, uh, great uh, uh, presentation that I think is uh, complete. And today we were talking about Afrofeminism in France. So I say in France because we could talk about uh, in Europe in general. For that, I will recommend you to this book, uh, Edith it's called To Resist, to Resist, Black Feminism in Europe. And uh, this is a great book. So you should uh, check on it. Um, so I have a slide and how we had to do some tests. Normally, if, if everything is okay, I will not be uh, shame because something wrong will happen. So let's see. And yeah, look at me doing uh, as he was supposed to be. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Present. Okay. Okay. So this is a teaching of Afrofeminists uh, in France, political autonomy as a compass. Um, so you see, this is the two picture, the first protest of the Coordination des Femmes Noires, uh, Black uh, Woman Coordination in 1977, and Moisi Collective in, 90, uh, in 2017 in Paris, the second uh, picture. Um, so. uh, because everything, uh, because nothing changed, everything changed. So this is actually uh, the um, one of the starting point. I think one of the core issue with the uh, with the uh, black movement in in uh, in general, the black feminist movement in kind of uh, nothing changed in terms of anti-blackness, misogynoir, sexism, uh, patriarchal uh, capitalism, but everything changed. More likely this, the system stay, but reconfigure itself in other, with other type of issue, other type of enemy, or the configuration or the demographic. So you can see here a really brief history of um, Black feminist organization. We will call them no Afrofeminists because they not self call them like that. They not call them like that. It is really important. The self naming is really an important point. But it was feminist group, 
uh, organized amongst black women. So it was a uh, different type of organization of black women in, in, in a feminist, uh, throughout feminist. So you have 1944, Paulette Nardal and the female gathering, uh, more on Martinique and Paulette Nardal is one of the Nardal sisters. Uh, she one of the really important figure of uh, the Negritude movement in France. After in 1976, 1982, uh, we have the Coordination des Femmes Noires, Coordination of Black Women, who held its first public meeting in 1977. Uh, political action was around misogynoir, anti-blackness, uh, apartheid in South Africa, uh, deportation, but also authoritarian regime in Africa. Uh, so, oh, I say in a, in French. So after we, the 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 collective disappeared in 1918, uh, we have the in a in I think have an overlap between the Mouvement des Femmes Noires, Black uh, Women Movement, 1978-1982, uh, and after 1982 to. Uh, before the the new millennial, we have a movement of the defense of rights uh, of the right of black women, movement de la défense des droits des femmes noires, mot des femmes. And you have lesbian of uh, color, more likely, let me do the math, uh, 15 years after, uh, in Paris, uh, composed major, predominantly of black women, black lesbian women. Um, so, why Afrofeminism? Why not, not Noir feminism? Why not, uh, I don't know, African descent feminism? Why not a movement of Black women? Why Afrofeminism? I think one of it's really important is, uh, oh, okay, I'm I doing too fast. It's doing a distinction, and it's for that I did the distinction between those groups of Black women organized in fem in within feminist organization, but not called themselves Afrofeminist uh, and Afrofeminism. The issue is that in English uh, we have a, um, a translation uh, issue. Uh, in French, you can say uh, les féminismes noirs to say that the Feminism, feminism that uh, of black women, but all black women, like uh, Haitian feminism, is one of the feminism noir. So it's feminism by black women, by black woman poetic. But if we translate that in English, it will be black feminism. But black feminism is not uh, only feminism, feminism by uh, a black woman. Black feminism is uh, actually a political movement. Black feminism is a, it's a concept, a poetic moral movement who has a context, a historical context, a geographical context in the US. And, uh, for, um, and, and it's a specific. So black feminism uh, in uh, English doesn't mean the same that feminisme noir in French. And Afrofeminism is not feminisme noir, is a, a kind of uh, it's a kind of feminist manual. More likely to understand if we had a translation, but I think I will let that uh, I will let that uh, that matter to linguists of femi uh, the feminist manual. We will have black feminism, not the American concept, and inside the black feminism, you will have womanism, black feminism, Afrofeminism, African uh, feminism of uh, black women, Caribbean feminism, uh, what we, um, uh, Africana womanism, you will have different types of uh, feminist noir slash black feminism. So writing as rioting, uh, I think that you, uh, call uh, Tejuko, uh, the, the writer, it say that uh, writing has writing, writing as 
writing, writing as writing, and on the good yeah. day, all three. So now I would talk about the early stage of really the self-naming. When I say self-naming is really uh, important, you will see in um, uh, early in two, 2000, 2009, 10, but mostly 2012, while well, the, the mainstream musicians start, 2012, 2013, have a um, young black woman uh, who write and about Afrofeminism and how they write about Afrofeminism. They start about their own experience in a private blog on Twitter. We were we were not that much on Twitter back to 2010, 2011. We were mostly one in, mostly 25, 50 account, but. Uh, producing a lot of um, analysis of sharing our experiences uh, about what is kind to be a black woman in France, a black teenager, and also a lot of uh, this blog. I put some of them, Mrs. Root, Mrs. Dredfield, Mani Chronix, uh, Sharon, Lucky Tambala, Agite, Sharon, she's uh, uh, one of the founders of Moisi Collective, qui est Miss. And you see an article, the first article, I think, in the uh, feminine press in 2015. You will see Mrs. Root here, Key uh, um, Emis, and uh, The Economist. So this, but have other blogs, have my own blog at the at, at the time. So it starts like that. Mrs. Driscoll, for example, she did a really uh, amazing job uh, about translating uh, Black feminist thought about uh, comparing uh, with a, a black woman in France. Uh, Mani Chronic uh, also, is a, she's a pioneer, she's a Pan-Africanist activist, Afro-feminist, but she was in the Pan-Africanist movement in France. She's a pioneer on that in her blog, Mrs. Root's blog. Mrs. Root's blog was really Afro-feminist, but a lot of literacy. She was talking uh, a lot about Octavia Butler, Toni Morrison, um, Etc. Uh, Kid uh, Sharon Kitambala Ajite was uh, more about uh, reproductive rights, uh, HIV migration because she's a social worker, work with uh, HIV migrant and mostly uh, African, Black African uh, HIV migrant, and also she really have an emphasis about uh, elder how we put link on that. And Kiemis was uh, really about art, and she now. Um, writing your poetry. So th the first of that, the self-naming, start on the digital world. So we were a bunch of people writing blog posts uh, on Twitter. It was a, I don't know, I am in Twitter now for 12 years. Yeah, more than 12 years, something like that. I don't know for the people who remember, but Twitter to, uh, 2011, uh, uh, 2010 Twitter was uh, 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 savagery. Like uh, it was very violent for black feminists, black women, for feminists in general, for all that people call social justice warrior for, come from that. So we don't have a number. It was smaller but because I don't have a lot of people, but the balance of power was uh, every single week we we endure some red organized action of bullying, harassment. Uh, people call our office, our institution, our school, have people call my employer about what I'm saying on the Twitter at, back in the time. Uh, people sending a nude at employer from people. We have um, uh, other black feminists, uh, another uh, black feminist, uh, um, uh, uh, she she just uh, vanished, block her account due to a lot a lot of uh, harassment. She has an I number, and more you have number of follower, more the harassment came. So it's not like today the harassment stop, but have more people. So have more a lot of more people come the, themselves Afro feminists. But at the beginning, we were not. Uh, uh, not a, not a lot. Uh, you have a count, six, uh, sexual positive count like uh, French Ho, who has a major platform and uh, had a lot of harassment. So we were not a lot. And because we're not a lot, many of us, we 
we took a lot of heat and you, you will see that now uh, some of them uh, just left, uh, just left, like Mrs. Dreyfus, Man Chronic, uh, Christelle, they just left, they just left and uh, uh, didn't engage uh, that much. Even the Man Chronic uh, have some um, blog spot. Now you will see the other stage after this uh, this stage of uh, first uh, on Twitter, on digital, because after we came in a real world, we meet each other, each other. So we 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 meet each other in a real world, do stuff and uh, create community. So we will see some uh, some projects that uh, that be in the late. Uh, in 2024, 20, uh, to 2020, uh, 2020, no, 2024, 20, uh, 20, yeah, mm, 2014 to 2019. So you have the, the documentary, the movie of uh, Amandine Gay ouvre la uh, Atuba is a website of the uh, story of Black women. Uh, you have a uh, Excel. It's a podcast. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry for that. So you have Excel, uh, Atuba. Excel is a podcast by Atuba. It's a, a podcast of uh, health and mental health and uh, emotion of Black women. Uh, you have the Humanist podcast. It was uh, recorded from uh, from New York by two. Uh, uh, black French woman. Um, you have uh, La Toile d'Alma. She is a former member. Alma is her. She is now living in, in Quebec, but in Montreal, but she is a former member of Moisy Collective. And you have Ataye. Ataye is um, literacy uh, made by three black women and, and uh, like a literary uh, digital uh, website. Uh, on the academic side, we you have in 2019 the the first day of uh, study day of feminism noir was the uh, activist made uh, it was made by students from uh, Université Paris 8, uh, in Par in Paris, and in 2020 you have um, black feminism uh, black feminism uh, in a uh, employer French context, and this is one more like a um, uh, academic uh, academic colloquium, uh, uh, international academic colloquium. And as it was feminism noir, black feminism uh, was uh, in plural. It means that we had a uh, talk. They have intervention of uh, Afrofeminism, but also feminism from uh, Western Africa, feminism from the Caribbean, because it was the uh, Black feminism post imperial uh, France. So the Black people living in France, but also the one living in a former uh, French uh, colony. So now we you have Afrofeminist collective. Now we going in the Political side. After this, uh, this uh, état des lieux of that, this is Afrofeminist collective. So have other, but uh, I don't know all the names. So this is the one that I'm sure of the name. Uh, you have the Afrofem. It's found on uh, 2012. It's the first one. And in, in 2014, you have Moisy Collective. Uh, 2017, we have Fauci uh, Lyon. Uh, 2017 to Creative Afrofeminist in Lille, uh, 2020 um, Collège Afrofeminist, and uh, 2020 Collective Afrofeminist in Strasbourg. So this is Black Afrofeminist Collective. This is politic, uh, politi politically organized with a, a goal, a statement, and other kind of um, uh, other kind of um, of uh, of political base action etc. So, what is the difference? Because I think a lot of you ask that the the main difference between uh, why Afrofeminism, why not Black feminism, why is different etc. So, Afrofeminism is a political and a militant movement aimed to uh, fight both the oppressive system of 
white supremacy, patriarchy, but also capitalism in our way, in a multi way, for example, of in a radical way. And it's been linked with, often linked with black feminism, but it's different because black feminism, as I say, is, uh, have a context, a uh, North American context, and, and more likely is really shaped by uh, African-American community in the U in United States, even though you have a lot of immigrant Caribbean uh, feminists that really add and uh, in core black feminism in uh, the US. But it's different because this movement taking account European particularly, particularity and national context. And when I say national context, the black community in France is, is different than in the US, for example, because the black um, community in France is really uh, a diaspora, but first diaspora, first diaspora community, um, first generation diaspora community. When the black community in the U.S. is the historic, what we call uh, the historical diaspora. When we mean historical diaspora, we're talking about the African American, but also the Haitian, the Jamaican, um, the people in the Caribbean. Is that the kind of diaspora that uh, that came from the uh, 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 slave trade? So you can also have. Uh, historical diaspora like afro iranian or people uh, from the, the slave trade, the Arabic slave trade. So it's historical diaspora. But in France, mostly of the black people there are from uh, post-colonial diaspora. Like they born, uh, they migrant from former colony of France and the kid born there. So you have people in demographic that really linked to the, um, they really link to the um, to to the uh, country of uh, of the parent origin of the uh, of the origin culture, as well, we say. So it make really di different kind of organization. For example, in in a, in France, you have a lot of organization based on cultural base, Asian organization, Senegalese uh, organization, and Senegalese organization like uh, you have different type of Senegalese. Uh, organization in function of the of the the group the ethnic group you have a Bambara organization from the Malian uh, for example but you also have Sonic organization and uh, this more likely uh, a kind of pan-Africanism uh, de facto <laughs> uh, context because you have mo mostly all those people from different country in uh, in Africa, from different places in Caribbean, and reminder that uh, France still have a colony like Martinique, Guadeloupe, La Réunion, uh, Guyane, uh, and other uh, department, so-called department, where the majority of the population are black uh, people and people like me from Haiti, uh, but we're not. Um, a lot, many in France is not like New York or Miami or Montreal, but we are enough uh, over there. So the context is different. So Afro-feminism, it's because Afro is what it's linked us together in terms of uh, cultural community. And it's linked us not just among us people, black people in France, but it's linked us also with uh, black Americans. Uh, with uh, Black British people, with Haitian, with uh, people from Senegal, with uh, Afro-Iranian, with Afro-Palestinian, with Afro-Brazilian. So it's for that it's Afro and feminist because it's feminist. So uh, the 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 question of Afro-feminism, the political subject of Afro-feminism is like the same as Black feminist. It's uh, Black woman, and uh, when we say Black woman, it's kind of big category that includes from Wasi uh, all women, uh, not different between cis or trans, but also a non-binary uh, people. So we, uh, we are an organization, uh, Afrofeminist organization, a mean to, um, to fight uh, white supremacy, uh, patriarchy, but also capitalism and uh, want a radical change of society. And it is different of Afrofeminism and not 
the Haitian feminists, for example, the Senegalese feminists, because we are in minority. Afrofeminism, like black feminism, uh, just I like the fact that we are in political, social, and economical minority as a woman, but not number because I have slightly more women in in France or in Europe and in the world than men. But as black people, we are in a, in a we are numerous uh, minority, but we also a minority in terms of politics economic and social in terms of domination. So Afrofeminism, like black feminism, can couldn't be understandable, uh, understandable in other contexts than a uh, uh, non-black uh, non country. So if you're in Haiti, you're not Afrofeminist because you're living in a country that's predominantly black. So the Russia question has, has not mean to be addressed. It can address like a, um, some kind of uh, consequences of that, like colorism is the consequences of that, like uh, neocolonialism, but it's not addressed like uh, minority, like in France. But in Brazil, for example, it's different because even if the global South country, uh, they have the uh, similarity of uh, issues than we have in, uh, in Europe or in North America in terms of racism with uh, white supremacy. So Haiti, Senegal, Cameroon is different because the Russian question is not like Russian minority, more like colorism of neocolonialism, of uh, uh, some stuff like that. And in countries like uh, France, uh, UK, uh, Germany, uh, United States, but also Brazil, Colombia, we have a Russian question, uh, really important of that. So, we, I will go back to my, uh, let me go back to that. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So now we going to uh, autonomy as a political compass. So I just summarized in really the core issue that uh, five group uh, with uh, black feminists, Afro-feminists in France. So I start with the big one, the big, big, big one, the state, the, the superstructure, the state, media, political party, you know, the big, big machine. So we are in France. France, race doesn't exist. You know, they remove race, the word race in the constitution. So race doesn't exist. Race exists only in the United States, uh, everyone is equal, everyone is a citizen, the, France doesn't see color, everything is perfectly fine, 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 fine. Even though how I uh, explained that France have a, a colony, that France was the country who created the, the Code Noir, uh, that France was the really champion of slavery, colonialism, but the rest doesn't exist. So the question in France is more likely race doesn't exist. Uh, everything is talked about race of organized politically around race of anti-blackness or anti-racism is anti-republic, anti-republic or reverse racism. And have to put some footnote here. When they say organized anti-racist is really when you organize by people of color politically against anti-racism by centering the Russian question. But if you lack uh, SOS racist, La Lika, uh, who left organization, anti-racist left organization run by white people, it's kind of okay. The history of this organization is um, socialist party, the socialist party in France, the left, uh, they took the power and they manage. They manage to always have control of uh, of neighborhood, but also city where uh, where a lot of non-white people live, uh, uh, black, Arab, Asian people live, uh, Rom, Roma people live in France. So, and this political this political control and power management is going through those kind of organizations like SOS Racist or LALICA, or you have major 
political figure of the Socialist Party uh, on the top of the organization and say what is racist or what is not, and how you have to mobilize against racism. More likely in the 18 and 19, they more likely about uh, the uh, far right is the only one who is in France. So they have to mobilize ag against that. And, and with the time coming up, uh, with the time and the left had the power and everyone sees that they were also racist, big surprise. And uh, also neoliberalism and socialist parties become closer and closer that uh, the Democrat party in the US uh, have more and more uh, autonomous uh, anti-racist organization in France. So uh, organization about anti-racism, uh, but led by Arab, Black, Roma, and Asian people. And this was a major, major clash because when uh, people of not my generation, but we will say 10 years older of me after the, the uprising in the, in, the, in, the, in the banlieue, the banlieue is more likely inner city uh, in, um, in France, uh, we have many organizations uh, politically laid and run by people of color and around racism that saying the word race about have a race a race Christian in France and we have to address that and um, we see a major clash on that those organizations the one created and led by the Socialist Party, the government and the state and funded by the state can more and more uh, focus about fighting us. So they, they were less and less focused about fighting racism and more and more focused about fighting uh, autonomous uh, anti-racist organization. For example, they they running um, legal action against Moasi, against uh, against uh, the Condité de Colonia, the De Colonia Supreme Camp, against uh, um, uh, Islamo the uh, collective against Islamophobia in France, against other anti-racist organizations uh, on the uh, purpose of uh, reverse racism, uh, um, Islamism, or separatism. Now, more likely, it's separatism of uh, anti-white racism. So in France is more like uh, race doesn't exist and you doing uh, river racism if you're talking about uh, race. And I, I don't know if you've seen in the news that now the, the state is really again the Islamo-Gauchism uh, translation, uh, Islamo-leftist uh, is the new, uh, is, is the new Judeo-Bolshevist is mean more likely to fight anyone that's talking about race, post-colonial, decolonial. Uh, they say also intersectionality and they say they want have one of the senator, now deputy, he want to um, ban uh, inclusive, uh, inclusive grammar uh, in the um, in a public administration, because French is a really a gender language, so even non-animate and non-human have gender. For example, this is a death. A death is masculine, so I have to gender the verb when I talk about the death. But if I talk about the table, it's feminine, so I have to gender that. So I have a, a lot of, and this is a political question because it was not every time like that, and have a rule say that the masculine uh, one over win over the feminine when you have to do grammar but it was not always like that but it's a historical linguistic history <laughs> that so uh, we have the white right leftist after fair craze long life to long life with class to go so you know Jacobin magazine we have the same here, but with more long history and more pin in the house than the Jacobin. Because Jacobin is more like the leftists in the country that they want nothing and they really doesn't matter and they don't do nothing that they, don't, they, they never won any major battle. But in France, leftist organization won major battle, political battle. They, do, they did some really bad stuff in the history. So they more self entitled that Jacobin, like way more sense than title. Just imagine Bernie Sanders saying, uh, 
uh, with Jacobin politic, but more loud and with a party that has some point won election. Just imagine. So those was really like that. Her race, long life, uh, the class struggle. Uh, after you have white feminists, TM, white feminists are groups that predominantly white movement in that division, 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 division. You division, you do the division of the woman struggle. We all women, blah, 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 blah. So you know that. Um, so you have anti racist and decolonial movement. So what you have to know is that in France uh, have a major issue that, um, not a major issue, it's a demograph demographic, but also a historical uh, context that makes that anti autonomous anti-racist movement or decolonial movement are, with, are really not uh, are predominantly uh, laid uh, by uh, North African Arab people in France and question that um, about Black uh, uh, black uh, community or black organization are often um, left um, left uh, left out. So uh, I said in um, uh, this have a, um, the majority of black activists can be found in cultural organization by nationality by nationality in France of Pan African with little or no contact with the colonial movement. And the colonial organization uh, position themselves as racial question in general, but we find that black people are not only numerically a minority there, but minority when it comes to specific struggle. This convergence has impacted the movement of black people as autonom uh, autonomous political subject. Um, so our response to the minimization the minimization and subordination of black struggle in this movement uh, is self-employment. So this is stuff I think after after 2016, uh, yeah, 2000, 2016. After 2016, you will see more and more um, like not the world was more separate with uh, autonomous black organizations who came louder and louder on the uh, on on the problem inside the decolonial movement. Uh, so the emphasis on empowerment was at the center of uh, one of my remarks in the closing speech given at the conference. Black condition and the necessity of violence organized by Sciences Po for Africa in 2007. So I will quote what I say. While having a global approach to the phenomena of oppression and exploitation and defending justice as a political horizon for all the oppressed, it's important that Black people in France refuse to stay in the position of the little brother of the struggle. The little end appreciated for the effort and the present to color the optic of the rank, but whose subjectivity and political thought is not much of much interest, especially when it's come to the specificity of anti-blackness. A sole black person is fine, but a political body made up of black people who question anti-blackness in multiple form across all political sphere that when uh, it's become a problem. So it was a major problem in this case that we Christian anti-blackness has uh, as global say, yeah, we have an anti-blackness question in France that we have the same uh, issue uh, uh, that the other community, mostly Arab community, has really similar issue with black community, except that the more target about Islamophobia uh, because Islamophobia is mostly racism toward uh, Arab people uh, in this term of vis vis uh, really visible Muslim. Um, so, so yes, it's true, but we also, as Black people, have a global issue of anti-Blackness, as any co every community uh, base uh, the differentiation on anti-Blackness. 
So have some local and global, and also we have to integrate the fact that mostly of the anti-racist decolonial movement in France uh, really base the analysis on black death, black dead author, uh, American, but also some kind of African, but to talk about everything except black struggle. So it was really, really that. And for finish, we have anti-feminist black organization. When I say anti-feminist black organization, I didn't say black organization that not do feminism or that not have feminist uh, politics or queer politics. I really say black organization that have one of the core core agenda is to be anti-feminist, but not anti-feminist toward all feminists, but really anti-black feminists, anti-black women who are feminists. Because you will see the same that um, anti-racist decolonial movement or black organization um, anti-feminist, they will have a really pretty great relationship with uh, some white feminist, some radical feminists who are white, not white feminists as uh, the, the bullshit feminists, but some uh, white women who are feminists are from uh, with queer uh, white people. They will totally fine with them because they will help them say, oh, you see, we're not uh, homophobic or misogyny uh, or um, sexist, sexist. You see this radical leftist feminist is support us. We just don't want, we don't just think that black feminists or decolonial feminists or feminism for, of Arab uh, women or Muslim women, is that, is that, is that necessary? So that's the point. So those uh, organizations that really have a lot of time, we seem to live, to living rent-free in the head every day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, it's about black women, black women, black women don't need feminism, emasculation, 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 white and white and die, and uh, and also you know the classical of has uh, uh, a black woman get killed by the police. We have to support them uh, as if we do feminism. It's uh, because mostly um, for women the 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 place that's more dangerous is not outside but it's inside and when we inside has we back in black community more likely the more dangerous is in, in inside the community so don't need to talk about that etc etc so those organization change so we see the change so the, the state doesn't change it stays the same toward us uh the leftist change and uh, uh the difference for create long life, uh, the class struggle was a comment left in the Moisy page in uh, uh, 2016. And the same organization uh, support us against Anne Hidalgo when Anne Hidalgo, Paris Meyer, uh, going on her way to ban our Nyan Sapo festival. So she, she went to ban our festival and it was a really dope festival. We did it twice, so uh, what well, kind of a fail of her? So, um, so yeah, they support us. So they change. Uh, what white, white feminists? They some of them don't change, but a great part of them really change, but really like the night and the day. Uh, the colonial anti-racist movement. I think that they didn't. They didn't change in deep in the earth. Is more likely they can they they stop um, be vocal about about that. So uh, they were more likely to do posts and to do you know um, intervention about how you we don't need any kind of uh, non-white feminists. I will say so now they just they just stop because the cost is higher. And this group mostly stopped also, but we see a reconfiguration. Uh, now it's not the activist group that have this um, kind of discourse, but more likely intellectual, intellectual, um, intellectual, not in organization figure like black men intellectual that will mobilize uh, 
American thinker like Fred Curie or whatever his name uh, to uh, mobilize some 1970s, 1980s uh, Black American masculinist uh, theory in France. So they will, they, I think it's more a career stuff because they're not in organization. They're more likely of group of no, no one know them uh, to do so. And they do a lot of theory so, uh, about, uh, about that, about, uh, about why Black feminist uh, is bad, why, it's, uh, why inherently Black men are feminists. So th this is a theory. Black men are feminists inherently because they are, they are under uh, racial domination. This is uh, the theory. So yeah, more likely we see the reconfiguration of this type of, this type of anti black feminist, anti afro feminist in France, uh, led by now uh, intellectual thinker, academic um, black men. Uh, yeah, academic black men. Mostly married with non 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 black men. This is just a gossip outside. So. Uh, people change, and why people change? This is change because they have some moral and God talking to the head, and they see black Jesus say, "You, we need liberty and freedom and justice." No, they change because of the balance of power, because we change the the game, because we were here, we stay, we we have we've been consent, we've been loud, and uh, and we've been here. So we keep our uh, we keep our rank or mark. We we did what we have to do. It was not easy. We have a, a challenge, a outside challenge, internal challenge, a cross movement challenge. Because you know our organization in France, Afrofeminist organization, has black organization of non white organization uh, are really um, uh, on the shoulder of people who are not on the best uh, economical shape, who have to work, who have family. So we have a really uh, human resource uh, issue, uh, money issue, uh, some, of, some of the issues that you know when you're um, uh, a grassroots organization, but we made this change. And we made this change by changing the balance of power, by producing um, theory practice from uh, activist stand. Uh, from an activist stand, by uh, doing solidarity, by doing uh, solidarity, solidarity work uh, within Europe, but outside of Europe, uh, also with other kind of um, organization. So, uh, so I think I'm done with that. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it, it was uh, more about that. And when we I talked about um, about autonomy as a as a as a compass is because we have to ask or uh, ask not ask but more <laughs> more likely to gain uh, our autonomy. Uh, from a various uh, from from, va from various groups and uh, with um, different strategy. So, for example, we have to from the state uh, from the state is to be not uh, not talking anymore with those uh, anti racist anti racist organization laid by uh, by uh, left uh, left uh, people. From the left, and when I talk the left, I, I mostly talk about the far left, not the Socialist Party in France or, or March or whatever, the far left, like uh, Trotskyist, uh, communist, blah, 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 stuff like that. From the left, it was way to encore um, a politic in uh, anti capitalist analysis and, and really sharp analysis. So we, we can uh, discuss sometime to, to do some stuff together, but we, Work in autonomy, but it's not mean that we are totally separate because the left, for example, have a really great network, not like in the, in the US of union. So sometimes we really need to work with them uh, throughout some uh, some action with some group. They're really helping uh, a lot. Um, um, not, 
undocumented uh, worker in France, undocumented worker ha has one of the most powerful group uh, in, in political, in kind of grassroots group, they're very really well, well organized. So we need to work with them. But the fact that we have a political autonomy means that when we have to work with them, with the social, um, with the climate justice movement, the social movement, the left, the communists, we going there in fact that we not in in the allyship bullshit politic about we don't need ally we need a uh, political cooperation that means that for a specific goal we have to work together because we can help together because this goal is important for us it's not us about to just uh, do some uh, some oh please be our ally and help us because we need the you etc it's political so we maintain a relationship with the left uh really political organization to political organization sometimes we agree so we do stuff and sometimes we we don't agree so we don't do stuff together but it doesn't mean we will not have to do uh further in the time from white feminist organization. So I think this group, white feminist or predominantly white uh, women feminist organization, they get to the point that uh, we not we we not end up like a BFF. So we better work in good uh, understanding and with all the question of uh, of uh, Me Too, of uh, sexual harassment of the um, of the what do we say uh, in English? How the name of this minister, uh, Secretary of State? Yeah, the, I think I think it's that, not the Secretary of State, the one that run the police, stuff like that. So uh, Damaha, uh, but what in English? Uh, it's the one who run the police, uh, etc. The minister in charge of that. Um, uh, uh, so. Uh, he's ha, is been uh, accused to uh, to sexual uh, sexual violence. So we mostly have um, several ministers who have issue with consent and uh, women. So we work with uh, feminist organization uh, in that the same way we we work with uh, with the left. We have a common goal and we work towards those goals. Um, from anti racist organization. We work as really on the police violence is really an important question. Uh, migration, police violence, migration, and common question that anti racism in France, and um, and it's um, it's it's kind of it's work because we're not inside the organization, so we don't have the Asian money. We're not living under Asian money. More likely, we do corporate corporation. It's work really better. And from an um, anti-feminist black organization, those ones we just don't talk to them. So yeah, that's the best. <laughs> that's the best strategy because we can do anything. It's like uh, we can talk with people that we don't ask uh, organization to be to be to be feminist, black feminist, Afro feminist, queer, but we ask them to just not spend time to bashing us. So with that. So, and now I have the last, uh, the last, uh, the the last uh, group that is uh, it's it's important for it's very really important for us, uh, Moisi as a group is is the black uh, organization, the black organization that's not feminist but that's not anti-feminist, and this one you have the Pan Africanist organization, you have a general black organization and those one this is our back and forth strategy so what we mean by ba black back and forth strategy is that we're working with those organizations um to 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 improve the understanding of um to improve the understanding of um of black feminist politic but also of uh, what it means to have an understanding of gender, of sexual orientation in the politics. And when they need to, to, to do something that is really related to, we work with them. And the, the back and forth politics is mean that also we are in Afro-feminist uh, specific struggle 
like uh, gender-based uh, violence, like um, like uh, uh, the body uh, colorism of really Afro-feminist, uh, Afro-feminist-based uh, Christian uh, about patriarchal violence, etc. And we are with all the black organization is in anti-blackness fight. It means that we are on all protests about uh, police brutality. We are on protests uh, on uh, migration. Uh, we uh, we work about the um, policy against uh, poor people because I've got black people have a, a, a huge, numerically huge uh, uh, proportion uh, in um, in poverty or close to poverty. So a uh, neocolonialism, because how I said before, uh, our demographic is really one generation from the former from the country in Africa and Caribbean. So we, I think it's a um, it's a uh, it's really um, uh, a a gain and a really a strength for for us as black organization in in France because we have de facto the international view. So de facto black organization are really uh, more international, are thinking uh, internationally, are thinking transnationally, are thinking about the impact because we have different links uh, to this country because we went there in holiday as a diaspora, but we, we see our parents sending money, our parents, uh, we, all, we still have contact, so we know uh, about the politics over there. And when your organization with, I think we have more than 24 nationality in Wasi, with people t t talking more than 15 different language, uh, it really helps because when we have to do international news, we do really international news. We have a um, a really good understanding, and it's really important. Um, uh, it's really important for us, and it's really something that help us uh, to to strengthen the the Pan Africanism, the Pan Africanism uh, in uh, our Afro feminism. And I see see that Afro feminism, Afro feminist organization in France, and also Black organization in France are more international Pan Africanist than the one in the US. And I think it's between of the geographical distances, but cultural distances too. And also that the fact that all organizations have more people from, when you're a black organization, more likely you will have a 40% of, of uh, West African, after you will have another percent of 40% of Caribbean, from French uh, Caribbean. And after you will have 20% of East African, of not co not common uh, black African here like Sudan etc. or Haitian and it's made that we have a really great understanding of that. So the the back and forth politics. So I will stop my slide now. The back and forth politics is important for that. Is that we uh, we do all specific all specific work. Uh, Afro feminist work when we organize around uh, about gender but also sexual orientation in Moisi for example we have a queer and trans commission working on that question about patriarchal violence about uh, women in migration and we did also the anti-blackness work uh, around the, the state of uh, black people globally uh, in France so for that we need to work in uh, with other black organizations but it's not just we need to work with is that we many of us in black organ in uh, Afro feminist organization are also member of Pan Africanist organization or black organization. So we we have uh, in both organizations we are black feminists in black organization, but we also black feminists in Afro feminist uh, specifically Afro feminist organization, and this is an important. Uh, an important uh, an important type of organi organizing to push of Afro feminist uh, uh, agenda uh, further because when you're a black feminist in black organization you make sure that if you have an action we're not doing some uh, bad test stuff so it, the goal is not to transform both organization into fem into Afro feminist organization or queer organization but to make sure that those organizations are not anti-feminist or anti-queer organizations. 
So it's a, it's a different and keep those space because Afrofeminist space are important. I know that people say, yeah, but if we do a general organization, I think it's important in the context of supremacy, patriarchy, et cetera, to have space, uh, Afrofeminist space, because we're not just do activism, struggle, struggle, struggle. We also uh, sharing moments, sharing intimacy, sharing um, a view. And uh, I think in a feminist view, uh, walking about uh, learning women to be together, politically together, not in competition, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, imp it's important. So that said, and for the world of the end, I think that uh, what is beautiful in the Afro-feminist uh, politics is that uh, we working toward a revolutionary and utopian, and we keep in mind that we part of the largest diaspora in the world, and and this is kind of beautiful because it's like uh, unless uh, it has no a border in terms of uh, culturally, but he is, is really warm, even it's not uh, every day easy, but it's not just struggle. Being uh, Afro-feminist or being black is not just struggle. He has a lot of joy, of uh, pride on that. And, uh, and we try to, to do some uh, uh, black feminist Atlantic to we call dear boy. So that's it for me. And thank you for the listening. Thank you so much, Fania. I mean, I mean, you have a you have a lot of questions, <laughs> um, and I'm like really thankful that you are you've contextualized like the specific experiences of Afrofeminist Black women in France um, that provides a greater understanding uh, for particularly like I'm always saying for Black American feminists. Um, or US based feminists to think outside of, which many of people are doing already, but for us to really reinforce in our praxis, what does it mean to be transnational in our approach? So I really, um, I really appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I will, um, you have like a, a lot of questions, like I said before. Um, so someone asked, is it possible to repeat the main difference between Afrofeminism and Black feminism? Um, they just want to make sure they have a, a, a clear context. Like, what is the main difference? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so Black feminism has an, a different genealogy that's Afrofeminism. Uh, so now I would talk, I'm talking like a sociologist. So <laughs> a different genealogy. So the context or where it was born is different. We see that black feminism in the black feminism, black feminist uh, politics and praxis and uh, black woman sexuality in the context of North America, United States is really linked to uh, slavery, slavery in the, in the US. It doesn't mean that only in the US has slavery, you have Caribbean feminism is also linked uh, to that. But the fact that um, uh, Caribbean women like Jamaica in Haiti doesn't live in the white country is meant that the, the, the black woman politic and the, the black man politic of the sexual, the sexual politic in general, the patriarchal politic is really different. In France, where you are, we are in the same situation that in, a, in the US in a minority, but uh, the slavery was not in France, like not in hexagonal France, like was really France is really great too high stuff over there. So the sexual critique is really different. So ma the major uh, community, the, the biggest community in France are not people that descend of, uh, of slavery, but are people that descend of, uh, of slavery. When I say slavery, that sure you have African people that descend of slavery, but more likely not Caribbean people or from the America, but are people with uh, uh, from migration from the colony. So it's made in different in terms of the sexual politics, it's made in different in terms of patriarchy, of culture, of culture of, uh, of, the, of the organization. And the fact that uh, people like the Coordination des Femmes Noires, uh, the first uh, Afro, uh, 
Afro-feminists will say, even though they didn't call themselves like that, they were migrant and students coming in France to organize. And after the after the the, the student life, some of them go back to their country. So it's really different when you have a context of black feminism in the US or people we stay there. So this is their country. They have not other country of exchange. Has black French, it's not like I have other country of, of of exchange, I, I'm black and French, but I'm Haitian. And so I have another country. So I have another kind of, of a projection, a political projection, or another territory where uh, where the relationship is different. And this is because the relationship, sex patriarchal relationship are different. In migration, they are different too. So this is the main difference. It's really uh, a context different, but as I say, when we translate black feminists in France, it will be feminist noir. And feminist noir doesn't just mean uh, US black feminism. It means all black women who do feminism. And in, 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 in translation in France, it's uh, kind of different. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I hope um, the attendee um, was able to get uh, further context of what you mean by uh, Afro, the differences between Afrofeminism and Black feminism. And speaking of noir, um, mm -hmm. I hope, I, hopefully I'm saying that right. And there's like so many questions popping up. I'm like, okay, let me <laughs> get myself together. But someone asked, can you please, or can you perhaps talk a little bit about the words noir, noir versus Black? Oh, noir is just a uh, noir in France. It means black in French. It's just like in France, as they don't have, they don't see color and they like to defend this, themselves from racial question. Sometimes they call people black, like in English. They say, uh, uh, they will talk in French and say black in English in the middle of the sentence. They will not say noir. And it's just um, a stuff that to defend themselves because noir is too racial. <laughs> but when you say black, it's you know, it's cool, it's American, it's black, uh, like that. So it's a linguistic, uh, it's a translation in linguistic of the racial uh, issue in France <laughs> with race. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, thank you. That provides greater context. Let's see. Um, someone asked, how does one build political autonomy and sustain economic autonomy? And they also said, thank you so much, very much for this fantastic presentation uh, and for organizing. Okay, so uh, a political and economical autonomy? Yes, how, do, how does one build political autonomy and sustain economic autonomy? I think it's going together. And I think that uh, political from the political ideology run the fact and I don't believe in black capitalism. I don't believe in capitalism at all. I believe in uh, the end of the class struggle and I believe that a uh, worker should, uh, should be the owner of the mean of production. So the only way to sustain economically uh, freedom and independence for all, for everyone, without people that uh, exploit people, is to get rid of capitalism and have a system where uh, working is not is not the the goal of your life, uh, working for a salary, but working doesn't decide that if you can eat, uh, uh, sleep somewhere uh, hot, warm, and and comfortable, or have access to water, education, and uh, also wealth and uh, and uh, enjoyment it's important enjoyment so yeah i think the the the, the major goal uh, the final goal is to is to abolish capitalism for the economic uh, uh, economic bienet of everyone but have a middle term goal and the middle term goal is to organize among union about organization to have a um, uh, highest minimum wage possible, better work condition, uh, more holiday, um, and more money for the for the work, and less money for the capital for the capital that people that not fund uh, capitalists, 
and uh, classroom. So middle term goal is to uh, do some amelioration of everyday uh, worker condition because everyone being poor would not help no one. So if someone can have a job, a better job, better money is great, but it would not end up the issue. The only way to, to have a solution is the end of capitalism. For example, me, I am in academia, so I'm in a PhD. I don't believe that uh, my university of academia in general, it's a place of freedom, of liberty, of a place that you can decolonize or change or reform. I think it's a place, it's good if I position on that to make possible to as many as possible black people uh, have position to get them have more better condition of living. Uh, it's great for that, great to touch uh, individual, but I don't think it's a place uh, that can be changed. So I think it's, you have to be really aware of where you are, what you're doing. If you're in a company, if you can get more people to get in and probably and have better salary and benefits, that's great. But the goal is not that. The goal is to make that the company one day uh, will be the ownership of the worker. <laughs> the capitalism doesn't exist anymore. And when the capitalism doesn't exist, have a lot of company with it would not need also. <laughs> Thank you so much for explaining that, um, yeah, and your perspective. So there is a very interesting question. Uh, actually, it was two parts, but I'll, um, I know that there's other questions, so I want to get to them. So um, someone asked, as a Black feminist, what is your hope for a Black feminist future in France and elsewhere in the diaspora? What challenges do you see? Oh, uh, yeah. So... I know a lot of, I don't, uh, I don't really, France doesn't live in my head, so I don't have really a lot of hope for France. Uh, I think it's really a grateful country, so, but as all my siblings over there, and uh, mostly of my friends, and how the French politics have an impact on uh, a lot of country I care about, is more likely to that, so I think Black feminist future is uh, not in France or in Europe, in the uh, in um, in in the global north in general, but I think that one place of black feminist future uh, radically is more a country like Brazil than uh, Europe. I think that country where black people are in um, minority, social political minority in the global south, are more likely to be the future of black feminism that. Uh, Western country because that's too too much to do too much to do. But I think that Black feminist organization in the Western country uh, work uh, working in inter internationally in a radical way can really be as agitator inside of the belly of the beast. But at one point, the beast have to be defeat. So it will have some consequences for everyone in those countries, even the black people on that. So yeah, so my, I think my, my vision of the future is that the Western would not always be the center and, and um, not always be the center. It will have the impact of a lot of people, the way we live, the way even from the margin, we, we, we benefit from uh, the situation of the Western be, be, uh, being the center. So, um, so me, I don't have any plan to stay living in the US or to back living in France. I want to back in Haiti. So my black feminist future are more likely uh, to see how we can do a smooth transition to uh, to kind of socialist uh, socialist. Uh, State in the Western, but I think that socialist organization, uh, radical socialist organization, not like the socialist party, would be the better to protect minority, Russian minority, but a anti racist socialist organization uh, would be great. And that allows uh, Black people living in Western, because I don't think it's a good idea that all Black people go back in Africa and Caribbean, not a good idea. I don't think they want to, and the goal is not that. So the goal, I think, is more likely that uh, uh, anti-blackness uh, be uh, is anti-blackness is well, it's better managed when we think Cuba is socialist 
country, uh, in country with a, in a, in, in a strong politics around that. And I think that pan-Africanism is needed because when, if we had independent, politically, socially, uh, black country uh, that can protect black people, it would be better for black people overseas. So I think pan-Africanism too. So the black feminist future is the black feminist pan-African uh, future, but the center would not be in Europe. And I mean black feminism really in terms of feminism, not so black women doing feminism. I think the center of, of, of black people politics and the heart of black people politics is more likely in global south and its country like that. Great, great. So there is another question um, that I thought was really interesting. Um, someone asked, this was touched on a bit earlier, but to go a little more in depth, what do you think of the word uh, race having been removed from the French, French constitution? Is it significant or does it truly impact the status of racism in France? And they also said, thank you for this insightful, powerful conversation. Oh, uh, you know, they're French. How this thing, the literacy that the world can change and move you first for the loving that the clue bear. They think that we move war of changing the law with inclusivity, with the just change the reality. They French living in their head. So they're making political linguistic move because they self entitled intellectual literature. That's a nothing. Okay, yes. <laughs> they live, they're living in their head and they're not. <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you for sharing that. And they're not. Yes, thinking that erasing the word will change and it does not. So um, I'm going to um, ask you two more questions because I know you've been yeah. talking for a long time. Um, and someone asked, can you talk more about Afrofeminism and the Me Too movement in France? Uh, I don't think that uh, Afrofeminism was really involved in the Me Too movement because the Me Too movement was really um, about, you know, how individuals talking this story and and we it will really took over by um celebrity individual that i like uh, i like that but it, i think in afrofeminist movement really use that moment to talk about how um the the idea of oh yeah accusation of rape uh, just deadly for for men career. So we really work about highlighting that no, uh, that no, no, no. So they can leave. They have acquisition and they leave. They become a, a minister. They they going in the Caesar and the can etc. And they live their life. And and most likely we we do a lot of analysis about the 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 way that um with accusation in the case of Nyakusat uh, Diallo, uh, with Dominique Roscan, has been uh, has been uh, managed by the press with all the Noir, etc. And uh, and uh, and yes, so it was really a, uh, a moment for that. But it's also because in France we don't have many black women uh, public figures, so it's not like the US. Great, great. Thank you so much for um, sharing that. And someone, uh, there's like a couple of questions um, that are asking the same thing. So I'm going to tie it in together. Um, and so someone asked, how well have Afrofeminist organizations managed to forge links across geographical boundaries? For example, French organizations linking with British organizations. Oh, yeah. So, for example, you know, we're doing Yom Kapo Festival. Doing Yom Kapo Festival is the first, the first uh, let me show you, that is, uh, if I see my camera, I think I did that. I will show you. This is Yom Kapo Festival. So, this is a big office that I keep there. Um, so, um, so, let me go back now. Okay. So yeah, so we're doing a uh, Neon Sapo Festival. So this is a, a European Afrofeminist festival. So we uh, we invite a lot of people from across Europe, but also from uh, have people from uh, from the US and uh, and from Haiti uh, came in the last edition. So it, it was a really an important moment 
uh, this year will not have the Antapo Festival because of COVID, but next year, if you want to come, it's in Paris, usually, and it's in the last weekend of summer uh, for the African, uh, the day of African women. So this is an important stuff, but also we tie internationally because we really uh, laid on our personal links. For example, me, I make all the connection from for the organization with Haitian feminists. Other organizations, for example, we have a member actually in Nigeria. So she made connection with uh, with what happened in uh, in Nigeria um, with the um, with protests with a black uh, feminist uh, queer organization in, in Nigeria. Uh, uh, some uh, we have former member from Sudan. So when uh, uh, uprising up, uh, happened in Sudan, we we know what to say, how who to contact, etc. People from Senegal, Cameroon, uh, other kind of of country, the Caribbean people that also uh, activists in Guadeloupe and Martinique uh, organization. So when have something about Claude Con, for example, and climate justice, we know about that. So really late about all the member we have. Now we have mostly 70 members uh, to know that. And the other organization, Max Kaoche, in New, uh, it's, it's more likely like that. They have members from Cameroon, from uh, Madagascar, uh, and uh, from uh, other Cap Verde, other kind of country of West Africa, so they really laid about the own community, the own knowledge of community to know that. The founder of Moasi, Sharon, it was Congolese woman, and if for that it's called Moasi, it means woman in Mingala, in Mingala. So uh, laid on the knowledge of what happened to Congo because the first protest of Moasi was against the rape on, on Congo as a user of wow. Crime. And we have another project that is um, is made with a black girl, a UK organization, and the movement for black uh, black girl, uh, black girl matter of the US. Matter of the US is a UK organization. Black girl, the US organization with movement for black life in the US. The project called the Afrofem Tour, the Afrofeminist Tour. You can go in the Mosty website and check on that. And this project is more likely we're doing a European tour, but now COVID is suspended. Uh, we're doing a uh, 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 European tour. We went already in London, uh, Belgium, uh, Madre, uh, Liege in Belgium, London in UK, Madrid in Spain, uh, Lyon in France, and at the plan was to go in Germany, and Germany, Italy, and, um, and Switzerland and Netherlands. Uh, also, and we work with a different kind of organization. And we, because I have a lot of people from France uh, fleeing France to the UK, mostly black, black people fleeing France for UK, Canada. Uh, uh, we have a former member that live in London and that in organization in London, and that's still a member of Marcy. So when we need to do stuff, we just contact them and we do stuff uh, together. But for example, Marcy organized. Um, a digital um, uh, university, and we put together has the first Nyantapo, uh, Hamata Jane. She's a, a activist against police violence. Her brother was killed 13, 13 years ago by the police in France. And Marcia He, she's a UK activist, uh, black man UK activist. And her brother was killed also 14 years ago with the same technique in 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 UK. So we put them together in Nyantapo for a panel, and this year again, uh, you can find the video. So we put link not just us as organization, but uh, through all also to see that in UK, the way that police violence uh, work is the same and also have a logic because we are in European Union, not UK anymore, <laughs> but in European Union. And it, this is on the scale of European Union that, um, uh, migration politics are uh, being decided, you know. So us working with a uh, Spanish uh, organization is really important with Black feminist organization in, in Spain or Black organization of Spain uh, is really important. The Black organization is working in Spain with in mostly a, a Black transmigrant organization is really important because the migration issue is really in the level of the uh, you, um, the union, European Union, and it's politically important to uh, tackle here. Uh, and also, 
uh, link with the, the UK in terms of when the UK were part of, <laughs> of Europe, but now we have uh, we we need some adjustment of uh, adjustment of, of, of that. But we also have links with a non-European organization, American organization, and uh, and yes, the more likely uh, uh, organization from Europe and after uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, Caribbean and um, African uh, uh, Black American in, in, in general organization and it's really linked to our personal link or personal stuff. I am I'm living in the US, so I meet people and we do connection in level of organization. Great. Well I am let me come back um, because I was off the screen, but I'm just so appreciative of Vania for just an excellent teaching. I learned so much about um, the differences between Afrofeminism and Black feminism, um, like transnational linkages, um, the important work that Black women have been doing. Like you said, you've always been here um, and, and are not going away. And so I thank you for the critical work that you do as an activist, an organizer, a scholar. And I know several people feel the same way. And I wanna go to the festival uh yeah. the night of Dapo festival one day so yeah, no no one day everyone come next year so you have mostly nowhere to go now no money to spend <laughs> just <laughs> just, <laughs> just send you money uh, if you come from the u.s uh, last year we have people from washington came so one thousand deal one thousand flight ticket in the summer and 500 for the hotel or uh, airbnb so wow. july 2022, just saving you money. You can see on the YouTube the video. You will love the video recap of the festival, and it, we is really a nice video. We have a cool. We have always the best party ever. So you you should come. I I will definitely. I need to so I can, uh, you know, be free for a little bit and learn. And and I hope this coronavirus will go away. Um and everyone's safe, but I really appreciate you, Fania. Everyone's saying thank you so much for this powerful and informative presentation. My cup is overflowed and that book is in my cart to exist, to, uh, is to resist. So I wanna say thank you. This uh, YouTube, this teaching, um, excuse me, will live on Black Mirror Radicals YouTube so that you can go back and reference and take further notes and just really uh, dig in. Amy, thank you so much for being here. Shout out to Sunu Journal. Um, uh, but make sure you follow Sooner Journal, excellent uh, uh, organization, um, archival, Instagram, all the things, amazing things. So thank you, Fania, you're the best. And I appreciate you so much and your activism and we'll be in contact soon. Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you everyone. And see you on Instagram, Twitter or everywhere. Thank you. Bye, thank you.